Hello, it's Metacosis Perfectionalis once again. Let's continue our biochemistry playlist. In previous videos in this playlist, we have discussed 26 biochemistry questions with answers. Today, let's add another six biochemistry questions with answers and explanation. And we will dig into the topic of competitive versus non-competitive versus uncompetitive versus mixed inhibitors of enzyme kinetics. So get you a pen and paper and let's see how many of these questions will you answer correctly? Let's go. There is a playlist on my channel called MCAT questions. You'll find tons of biology, chemistry, and biochemistry questions. And soon we will add organic chemistry and physics as well. Here is question number 27. All of the following biochemical processes take place in the cytosol. Except, is it ketogenesis, HMP shunt, fatty acid synthesis, or nucleotide synthesis? Let's try. Ketogenesis, it occurs in the mitochondrion. How about HMP shunt? It takes place in the cytosol or cytoplasm. Fatty acid synthesis, also cytosol or cytoplasm. Nucleotide synthesis, also cytosol or cytoplasm. The only one that occurs in the mitochondria here is ketogenesis, and that's the correct answer. Next, here's the lovely amino acid glycine. We call it amino acid because it has an amino group and a carboxylic acid group. Each group has its own pKa. The pKa of the carboxylic acid group is about 2.3, of the NH2 group is about 9.6. Let's put this glycine in a medium whose pH is 11. Which of the following forms of glycine will occur? Will glycine exist in this form, this form, this form, or this form? Please pause. Remember, when we put glycine in a pH of 11, notice that this pH is greater than this pKa and greater than this pKa. If the pH and the pKa are equal, then the protonated fraction will equal the deprotonated fraction. But when the pH is winning, i.e. when the pH exceeds the pKa, as in this case, 11 is greater than 2, and 11 is also greater than 10. When pH is winning, when the pH is greater than the pKa, then the deprotonated fraction will win over the protonated fraction. So let's do this for each one of the two wings. When it comes to the carboxyl group, where is the deprotonated who's winning? The deprotonated is the one that does not have the protons. It's the one that does not have the hydrogen. So COO is winning. That's the first part of the question. Next, when it comes to the amino group, which one of these is the deprotonated form? The one that has less protons, less hydrogens. So it's the NH2. So glycine will exist in the form that has COO minus and NH2. As you see here, when one wing is negative, Negative and the other wing has no charge, the entire amino acid is negative. So, will you go with COO minus or COOH COO minus? How about the NH2? Will you go NH2 or NH3 plus? I'm going NH2, so glycine will exist in form C. Let's review. When pK and pH are the same, both fractions are equal. When the pKa is winning, the protonated form is winning. When the pH is winning, the deprotonated is winning. And since this pH is lower than this pKa and it's also lower than this pKa, who do you think is winning? pKa is winning, which means the protonated fraction is winning. When it comes to the carboxyl, I'll have the protonated form. When it comes to the amino, I'll also favor the protonated form, and glycine will exist in this form at a pH of 1. So if I put glycine at a pH of 6, which is greater than 2.3, but lower than 9.6, what's going to happen? Regarding the carboxyl, COO- will win. Because for the carboxyl side, pKa is lower than pH, so the deprotonated fraction will win, COO-. And at the same pH of 6, regarding the amino side, who's winning? Well, the pH is 6, but the pKa here is 9.6, so the pKa is winning. When the pKa is winning, the protonated fraction is winning, and it's going to be NH3 rather than NH2. So at a pH of 6, glycine will be a zwitter ion. One side is negative, the other wing is positive. So it's a hybrid, zwitter ion. The word zwitter means hybrid. And ion, because we have a positive ion and a negative ion here, making the entire molecule neutral. 
When I put glycine at a pH of 13, guess who's gonna win? At the carboxyl side, the deprotonated and the amino, also the deprotonated will win. So it will exist in this form. If you have any problem with the concept of titration of amino acids, please refer to video number three in this biochemistry playlist. Next, which of the following processes take place in both the cytosol and the mitochondrion? Please pause. And the correct answer is gluconeogenesis. There are three main pathways that take place in both the cytosol and the mitochondrion. Please write them down. These include 1. Heme synthesis. Number 2. Urea cycle. Number 3. Gluconeogenesis. How about the TCA or Krebs cycle? Only in the mitochondrion. Electron transport chain. Oxidative phosphorylation. Only in the mitochondrion. Ketogenesis. Only in the mitochondrion. Next, all of the following are cofactors or coenzymes to the pyruvate dehydrogenase enzyme complex, with the exception of is it thymine pyrophosphate or TPP? Is it coenzyme A or CoA? Is it riboflavin, zinc ions, or lipoic acid? What do you think the answer is? Well, first let's talk about the rule and then let's talk about the exceptions. If I'm talking about pyruvate dehydrogenase complex, I need five cofactors or coenzymes. And the mnemonic is the Teflon company. What's the T? TPP, which came from thiamine or vitamin B1. How about the F? FAD, which came from riboflavin or vitamin B2. How about the N? This is NAD or niacin, which came from B3. How about the L, lipoic acid? And how about the CO? It's coenzyme A, sulfur reduced. And whenever you see coash, say thank you to vitamin B5 or pantothenic acid. Which means that this enzyme complex required TPP, it needs coenzyme A, riboflavin, and lipoic acid. But zinc is the least likely to be needed here. The same thing is true for the alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase complex. We have met pyruvate dehydrogenase complex between glycolysis and the TCA cycle in the step in between the two pathways. How about the alpha-ketoglutarate dehydrogenase? That's in the TCA cycle. Both enzymes require the same five cofactors. Mnemonic, Teflon company. Next, which of the following amino acids is non-essential under normal circumstances, but it becometh essential under abnormal circumstances? Please pause. And the answer here is arginine. Why? Because arginine is semi-essential or conditionally essential amino acid. Remember when we classified the amino acids into essential amino acids, these included nine, semi-essential or conditionally essential amino acid, which are six, and non-essential, which are five. Nine plus six is 15, plus five equals the 20 famous proteogenic amino acids. The question is asking about an amino acid that's normally non-essential, but in some circumstances, like diseases, it becomes essential. And the correct answer was arginine. Next, atorvastatin is a lipid-lowering medication that acts as a competitive inhibitor of the HMG-CoA reductase, the rate-limiting enzyme, in cholesterol synthesis. If the gray line right here, the control line, represents this HMG-CoA reductase enzyme, before inhibition. Which of the following lines, A, B, C, or D, represents the same enzyme in a patient already taking atorvastatin? Please pause and try to answer this yourself. Basically, they're asking you which of the following lines, A, B, C, or D, represents a competitive inhibitor. Let's review Linweaver Beaver Burke graph that we discussed before. What's on the x-axis? 1 over the substrate concentration. And what's on the y-axis? 1 over initial velocity, i.e. 1 over the rate of the enzyme or the rate of the reaction. What does this point signify? Well, the control line intersects with the x-axis at this point, which is negative 1 over km. The inverse of the inverse is the same. The negative of the negative is positive. So when this point is shifted to the right, negative 1 over km goes up and km goes up. When it's shifted to the left, negative 1 over km is going down and km is also going down. Please remember that km is the opposite of affinity. If Km is going down, affinity is going up. But if Km is going up, affinity is going down. Affinity means how hard or how strong the enzyme and the substrate love and hug one another. 
How about this point or the intersection between the control and the y-axis? It represents 1 over Vmax, so it's the opposite. If this point goes up, Vmax goes down. If this point is shifted downwards, Vmax goes up. Next, look at this competitive inhibition graph or line. Okay, it intersects with the control here. So the 1 over Vmax point did not change which means Vmax did not change. A competitive inhibitor does not alter my Vmax. So the point on the y-axis does not change. However, notice what happened with the green line to the Km. When you shift to the right, Km goes up because a competitive inhibitor lowers the affinity between the enzyme and the substrate. That's why we call it competitive inhibition, because this drug, like atorvastatin, is gonna go and hug the enzyme, HMG-CoA-reductase, and when it hugs the enzyme, the enzyme is inhibited. So the affinity between this enzyme and the normal substrate goes down, which means I am not going to be able to synthesize cholesterol de novo, and that's why atorvastatin lowers de novo cholesterol synthesis in the human body. So how can I recognize a competitive inhibitor line on this graph? Well, it does not change the Vmax, but it changes the Km. It increases the Km. So on the horizontal axis, I am shifted to the right. On the vertical axis, I am not shifted at all. So what do you think the answer is for a competitive inhibitor? Is it A, B, C, or D? Well, let's think about it. Here's the control. The control intersected with the vertical axis at this point. This point should not change after adding the inhibitor. Amazing. And then let's look at the control intersection with the horizontal axis. This point should be shifted to the right because the Km increases but the affinity decreases when I add a competitive inhibitor, which makes choice A the correct answer for atorvastatin, the competitive inhibitor of the enzyme. Which means by taking atorvastatin, the Vmax of the enzyme does not change, but the Km goes up, i.e. the affinity goes down. How do we draw a non-competitive inhibitor? Well, it's the opposite. Look what happened to this point. It was shifted upwards, which means Vmax decreases. And when it comes to the intersection with the horizontal axis, no change, which means there is no change to the Km, which means there is no change to the affinity between the enzyme and the substrate. This is a non-competitive inhibitor. How do we draw a mixed inhibitor? It could be this pink line or the other pink line. How do I know it? It intersects with your control at a point that's neither on the x-axis nor on the y-axis. It's kind of hanging in the outer space. It's not on the y-axis and it's not on the x-axis. One intersection point was here, the other intersection point was there. How do I draw an uncompetitive inhibitor? A line that is parallel to the control and does not intersect with the control whatsoever. So let's practice. Please pause the video and draw a competitive inhibitor on this graph. A competitive inhibitor does not alter Vmax. A competitive inhibitor lowers the affinity, which means it increases Km. So let's just join these two points together and this line represents a competitive inhibitor like statin medications including atorvastatin. Next, let's draw a non-competitive inhibitor. A non-competitive inhibitor does not alter the affinity, so the Km remains the same. A non-competitive inhibitor lowers Vmax, which means 1 over Vmax increases. Let's join these two points together and you have a non-competitive inhibitor. Third, let's draw a mixed inhibitor. Well, there are two ways to draw a mixed inhibitor. The most important fact to remember is that it's going to intersect with the control at a point that's neither on the X axis nor the Y axis. You can also extend the control like this and intersect the point here and draw the mixed inhibitor like this. How do I draw an uncompetitive inhibitor? A line that is parallel to the control. Okay, medicosis parallel and above the control or parallel and below the control well uncompetitive inhibitor lowers vmax which means one over vmax has to go up which means you have to draw your line above the control parallel to the control and above and here's the table that we used to compare among the four types competitive inhibitor non-competitive inhibitor mixed inhibitor uncompetitive inhibitor Competitive inhibitor binds the enzyme at the active site, the front door. 
but all the others are going to bind to the back door. Competitive inhibitor raises the Km, which means lower the affinity, but does not change the Vmax. Non-competitive inhibitor does not change the Km, does not change the affinity, but lowers the Vmax. Mixed inhibitor, well, it may increase or decrease the Km, but it always decreases the Vmax. Uncompetitive inhibitor lowers Km, which means affinity goes up and the Vmax goes down. So, competitive inhibitor is unique. It's the only inhibitor that binds the active site. All the other doofuses bind the allosteric site. Number two, competitive inhibitor is the only inhibitor that does not change the Vmax. It does not lower it. However, all the other doofuses lower the Vmax. They lower the rate of the reaction. So now we have A, B, C, and D. Can you tell me which one is the competitive inhibitor, which one is the non-competitive, which one is the mixed, and which one is the uncompetitive? Please take a second to think about these questions. A is the competitive inhibitor. B is the non-competitive inhibitor. C is the uncompetitive inhibitor, whereas D is the mixed inhibitor. Why is this? A is the competitive inhibitor because it did not change the Vmax. However, it raised the Km, meaning it lowered the affinity. As for the non-competitive inhibitor, it lowered the Vmax, so the point of intersection goes up on the vertical axis, but it did not change the affinity or the Km. How about C? Uncompetitive inhibitor, the parallel one. Well, it's parallel and above because it lowered the Vmax. What did it do to the Km? When you shift to the left, Km goes down, affinity goes up. How about D? D is the mixed inhibitor. If I continue this line upwards, I'll find that the Vmax went down. That's why the point of intersection went up. Mixed inhibitors might increase or decrease the Km depending on the condition. If you want more review on this topic, please refer to video number 21 in this biochemistry playlist. Next, which of the following letters depict the rate-limiting enzyme in the de novo cholesterol synthesis? Is it A, B, C, or D? Let me know your answer in the comments. You'll find the answer key in the next video, where we'll talk about even more biochemistry questions with answers. If you find this video to be helpful, please consider buying me a coffee. You can download my biochemistry notes, my chemistry notes, my biology notes, my physiology notes, hematology notes, pulmonology notes, all kinds of notes on my website medicosisperfectionalis.com. I also have premium courses on my website, such as my famous kidney physiology course. There are more than 1500 free videos on this channel, plus 300 premium videos only for those who join the tribe by clicking on the join button and choosing the highest tier. Please smash like, subscribe, hit the bell, support my channel here or here or on Venmo. Go to my website to download my courses, notes, cases, or if you'd like me to personally tutor you. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.